The SteelSeries Arctis Nova 5 is a weird headset. According to SteelSeries, it's part of a new affordable luxury category that includes features found on the higher end models while remaining reasonably priced. Now, I reviewed the Nova 4X a little while back and I think it neatly adds an affordable wireless option to the SteelSeries range. But here we are with the Nova 5, another wireless headset that retails for just $50 Australian more than the Nova 4X. This headset has a couple of unique features, but key among them is the new companion app. This lets you change a number of settings on the fly, such as EQ, and this has a pretty significant impact on usability. There's a lot more to unpack here, so let's just get stuck right in. Let's talk about compatibility first. The Nova 5 comes in three different configurations, the base Nova 5, the 5P, and the 5X. All of them work wirelessly with PC, Mac, PS4, PS5, Switch, MetaQuest 2, most USB-C devices and Bluetooth devices. On the Switch you have the option of a Bluetooth connection too. It's not as lag-free as the dongle, but hey, options are always nice. They all have the same features with one exception. The 5X is the only model that works wirelessly with Xbox. All three variants retail for the same price, so if you have a variety of devices, including Xbox, then the 5X is the way to go because it gives you the most compatibility. From a design point of view, the only difference between the three models is the headband color and the color of the lettering inside the ear cups. I must admit, it's a little disappointing we didn't get a white colored option for PlayStation here. I guess SteelSeries is keeping that color exclusive for the Nova Pro. The Nova 5 does support dual connectivity, letting you connect something via the dongle and something via Bluetooth simultaneously, but only a single audio source can be listened to at a time. You'll need to use the quick switch button to toggle between sources or to answer incoming calls. Now, something that's becoming a bit of a trend with headsets is that there's no 3.5mm auxiliary input. This means that the Nova 5 is a wireless only solution. I might be alone here, but I feel like if you want to call it luxury, a traditional audio cable would have been nice, but hey, that's just me. Battery life is a massive 50 hours via the dongle or up to 60 hours using Bluetooth. As usual, running both of them simultaneously will drain the battery faster, although I couldn't get an idea of how much this impacted playback time. The battery is so big that I didn't have time to test it thoroughly during the brief review window. On the JBL Quantum 360p, which I just reviewed and has a similar dual wireless setup, running both wireless connections seemed to reduce the battery life by about a third. Now, obviously these are different headsets from different manufacturers and probably use different internal components, so that number is just a ballpark. There's a fast charge feature which gives you up to 6 hours off a 15 minute charge, and you also have the option to charge them and use them at the same time. At 262 grams, this is a very light headset. It's the same weight as the Nova 4, which is impressive given the additional features and the much larger battery. Actually, side by side, the Nova 4 and 5 are almost identical, sharing the same headband and yoke design, the same ear pads, and similar controls. These are all positives because the Nova 4 is a very comfortable and flexible headset, and the same is true here. This is also good news if you want to swap out the pads, because they're the same across the Nova 3, 4, 5, and 7. Now, personally, I like the stock pads they come with. They're comfy even while wearing glasses, and they breathe much better than leather pads. The inner dimensions measure 5.5cm high, 4.5cm wide, and 2cm deep. My ears do slightly make contact with the drivers inside, but this never caused any discomfort due to how light they are, and because of the minimal clamping pressure. I think the Nova range has some of the most well thought out controls on any headset at the moment. Unlike a lot of other headsets, the controls are evenly split across the left and right ear cups. The dial feels tactile and not overly sensitive, and the other buttons are intuitive. Toggling between audio sources is instant, and you get a voice prompt that tells you which connection is active. You can also see this information on the app. Strangely, the 5P, which is what I was sent, doesn't have a side tone dial. You can manage side tone in the desktop and mobile app, but chat mix will need to be managed on the connected device. I don't personally mind not having either function on the headset, but I get that this could be a non-negotiable for some. The Nova 5 has decent imaging and detail. Base is there if you want it, although the sub-base is a little muddier than the Nova 7. So there's still a genuine reason to go for the high models, but overall the Nova 5 is still a good sounding headset. Out of the box it has the flat EQ preset loaded. Even in this configuration I found the sound to be on the bright side. This is unusual for a SteelSeries headset because I normally find the flat setting to be spot on. There are a number of music settings such as deep bass, clear vocals and punchy, but all of them are a bit shouty. Thankfully, after a bit of tinkering, I was able to dial in something more pleasing. Like the rest of the Nova range, I think they're well suited to movies and music. On the proviso, you're willing to play with the EQ settings. 
This could very well change in the future with a firmware update though. Something I really like is how the EQ presets are managed. You can adjust them for each wireless signal independently. So for example, you can have your Warzone preset on the 2.4G and then your deep bass preset for listening to Tool over Bluetooth. Okay, so while we're talking about EQ settings, let's talk about the big innovation here, which is the mobile app. The app, which is available for both Android and iOS, allows you to adjust mic settings like volume and side tone, there's a master volume limiter, and it gives you access to the EQ settings. Any changes you make happen instantly. You don't have to wait or power the headset off and on for the changes to take effect. The marketing makes a big deal about there being over 100 EQ presets to choose from, and yeah, it's a pretty big list. These are mostly game-specific presets, which cover a broad range of titles, from Bolt Gun to WoW to Forza to Street Fighter and just about everything in between. It obviously doesn't have everything, but plenty of the recent big games are here, as well as the regular heavy hitters like COD and Battlefield. It has a few music and movie presets too. My only complaint is that because this is such a big list, finding what you want can be a little cumbersome. The version of the app I was using was a pre-release, so hopefully a more elegant UI that categorizes presets is planned in the future. Now, you can make your own custom presets, although currently this needs to be done through the desktop app. These get saved and synced with the mobile app and appear in the list with the rest of the presets. This is a simple process, but hopefully custom EQ presets will be made available through the mobile app at some point. Now, on that note, the desktop app, which has historically been PC only, at least when talking about managing your settings, now works with Mac. I'm talking specifically about the GG client here. Unfortunately, the Sonar software, which is part of the GG suite and gives you access to things like SteelSeries Virtual Surround Sound, is still PC only. The mic is the same clear cast retractable mic you'll find on the Nova 4 and the Nova 7, and this is what you're listening to now. As usual, I've recorded this without any post-processing. This is the raw audio exactly like you would hear over party chat. If you're using the Sonar software, you can use the microphone noise cancelling feature. This is incredibly powerful, but just to be clear, this is only available via the desktop software. This isn't available via the app. Overall, the Nova 5 is a solid headset with a couple of minor issues that will hopefully get ironed out with a few firmware updates. You get the same comfort and intuitive controls as the rest of the Arctis Nova range, a bigger battery than the Nova 7, and the app is a very welcome addition. Being able to change EQ settings on the fly is awesome, and for the most part, the app is straightforward and fast. Hopefully, it continues to receive updates and they can fine-tune the usability. At only $50 more than the Nova 4X, I think the choice here is simple. The Nova 5 has a bigger battery, Bluetooth, and a companion app. It doesn't have a chat mix or side tone dial, but all things considered, it's a solid, if slightly quirky headset at an affordable price. If you need a lightweight, comfy pair of cans with loads of setup flexibility and a choice of wireless connectivity, this will do the job, so long as you don't mind a bit of EQ tinkering.